Hi, I'm Jeff Hajek, the owner and founder of Election. This video is part of my lean training system. It was originally released as a DVD a long time ago, but times have changed and the look of some of these LTS videos is now a bit dated. The content is still spot on though. So rather than just discontinue the line, I am posting the majority of each of the 36 videos here with the remainder available at Velaction Videos. That's our video service where you can download a wealth of supporting content and watch subscriber only videos. I recommend subscribing and hitting the notification button if you want to make sure you don't miss any new content. I would also really appreciate if you would hit the like button if this video is helpful and you want to see more content similar to it. The like button helps us get found on YouTube, but it also lets us figure out where you want us to put our future effort. Now enjoy the free version of this video. Welcome to Velaction Continuous Improvement's presentation of our training on root cause analysis and the five whys. I am Jeff Hajek, the founder of Velaction and the author of What Do You Mean I Gotta Be Lean? In this presentation, you will learn what root cause analysis is, we'll talk about why it is useful to your company and to you, and we'll talk about how to use the most commonly applied root cause analysis tool, the five whys. Let's start out by talking about how people often handle problems. When there is a single occurrence of something, people tend to treat the symptoms. Imagine you have a child who loves skateboarding. If he comes home one day with a scraped elbow, the treatment is likely to be a band-aid. You are unlikely to take much further action. In general, we treat the symptoms of isolated problems with band-aids. Unfortunately, sometimes we take the treating of symptoms too far and we continually treat the same one over and over and over. This applies in all aspects of our lives. At home we do things like top off the oil in our car every month when there is a slow leak or if it is burning oil. On the shop floor, the most common way we treat symptoms of inefficient or ineffective processes is with inventory. Inventory is like aspirin though. It takes away the pain, but the real problem is still there. We even see examples of this in the office. It is not uncommon for people to put up do not disturb signs or to hole up in a conference room to get some work done without interruption. I hope you are getting something valuable out of this video. If you want to get more out of this program, we recommend watching it on Velaction videos. You'll be able to watch the entire video, mostly ad free, and view subscriber only programs. You'll also have access to a load of continuous improvement downloads. Now, we often don't look at those behaviors as problems. We frequently accept that sort of symptom treatment as an effective method. But let's think about our skateboarding child again. If he came home every day with a new injury, we'd want to do something to protect him. If we just slapped a band-aid over every injury, we wouldn't be solving the problem. We'd just be treating the symptoms and there would be no hope on the horizon we'd have no reason to expect the cuts and scrapes and bruises would ever end. So that leads us to root cause analysis. It is the practice of diving deep into a problem and understanding the chain of events that got the ball rolling toward the symptoms that we can see. You can think of it a lot like detective work. You've got to scrutinize the details and get knee deep in the problem to fully understand the sequence of events that led to the outcome you're investigating. The key point of root cause analysis, though, is that making a change to the root cause will permanently change the outcome. This is markedly different than treating the symptoms. Putting a band-aid on an elbow today doesn't prevent another scrape tomorrow. Elbow pads, or improving skateboarding skills, though, would. This gets to be a gray area, though. Every action has another preceding action that triggered it. It takes a bit of judgment to decide if you're really at the root cause. Again, the key is permanent change. If the symptom keeps showing up, you missed the mark. The reason why root cause analysis works is due to the cause and effect principle. Simply stated, there is a relationship between a step in a process and an outcome. Every symptom or effect was caused by something. In the simplest relationship, the cause and effect are closely linked and are easy to see. Unfortunately though, we do not live in that simple of a world. There are often several steps in between the cause and the effect. 
It takes a bit more detective work when there are intermediate steps. But even this more complicated situation might not truly represent what happens in the real world. Some symptoms are caused by several factors interacting. The process flow is branched and it can be a challenge to identify how different causes combine to make the effects you observe. One more point bears mentioning. Not all effects are bad. Sometimes the effect we see is something that we want to replicate or even increase. While root cause analysis is most commonly viewed as a problem-solving tool, it also provides a way to capitalize on opportunities. So now we've talked about what root cause analysis is, it's time to step back and look at why it matters to us. From the company's perspective, the biggest reason is that it increases profit. If you can increase the good and decrease the bad, you can bank a lot more coin. But it also does other things. It makes customers happier as they will not see the same problems over and over. And not having to keep treating the same tired old symptoms will free up time. Time that can be better spent on a whole lot of other things. But the great thing about root cause analysis is that it also helps employees. First of all, it takes away a lot of the frustration people face in their jobs. Think about the parts of your job that cause you the most grief. I'd wager that at least a few of the top problems are nagging ones, things that keep happening over and over that you just can't seem to put to rest. Of course, that lets you spend your time doing more of the things that you want to be doing and less time doing the stuff that you dislike. That has to have a positive impact on your job satisfaction. As part of the lean training system this video comes from, we offer a variety of lean Lego training packages. These include our Lean Lego Flow Simulation, Mistake Proofing or Pokey Oak Lean Lego Exercise, and our Visual Controls and 5S Lean Lego Exercise. We've also got an Office Flow Simulation for those not implementing continuous improvement on the shop floor. Click the links in the description below or click on cards that pop up on this video to learn more. We'll also add links at the end. So now we know what root cause analysis is and why it is important. The question now is how to do it. The first step, obviously, is that you have to recognize that there is a problem or some sort of trend. After you see the problems, you have to prioritize them not only against each other, but you also have to prioritize the symptoms within each problem. This is most typical in broadly defined issues like poor quality or falling sales. Each of these may have many symptoms that you can identify. Steps two and three actually blend a bit. Some of the tools may play a role in helping you prioritize the problems, but the point of step three is planning. It is important to take a systematic approach to problem solving, or you will increase the likelihood that you will make errors. The point of the tools, though, is to find the specific process step or steps that are the source of the problems. Finally, you should check your work. Just like the Deming cycle, you want to make sure that you are right before you take action. It is important to note that root cause analysis is only part of the problem solving process. It does not include the actual resolution. This can be hard for some people to accept, especially when the problem is in their area. So why would you not go after a resolution? The most likely reason is one of resources. As you get better and better at finding root causes, you'll simply not have enough time, money, or people to fix them all. In the modern business world, people have full plates, and they have to be selective about what they take on. Another reason is that when the cause is discovered, you recognize that the benefit of the action outweighs the cost of the symptom. Think back to that teenage skateboarder. Wearing elbow pads may diminish street cred and cause merciless teasing from friends. He might prefer the occasional wipeout to the solution. You may also run into situations where you define a problem differently than a customer does. An example would be when a customer service manager sees long hold times as a problem, but a customer prefers to wait in line to talk to a specific rep that she has a relationship with. The last reason ties into the second one a bit, but sometimes the solution is just too costly with the current knowledge about how to fix it. That's okay. You undoubtedly have a long list of higher payoff projects to work on. 
When there are few occurrences of a symptom, it can be very difficult to identify the source of the problem. There simply isn't enough information to make the inferences you need to zero in on the cause. This problem is somewhat diminished when you have a good infrastructure in place. A daily management system where you track progress against a plan, or having a way to collect data for reporting metrics both help when it comes time to do the deep dive. One way that you will often identify problems is when a pattern emerges. The problem is that without sophisticated statistical analysis, patterns can be hard to spot. First, you may see red herrings, patterns that aren't really there, or you may simply miss the pattern altogether. In this series of numbers, there is a pattern which might be challenging to spot. Every other number is prime, meaning it can only be divided by itself and yield a whole number answer. In your process, you may have similar obscure patterns that make them hard to identify. Get more out of our Lean Training System videos with our Continuous Improvement Companion. It's closing in on a thousand pages of great content. It is currently available as a download with a subscription to Vlaction Videos and as a license through our store. You can also get a free version of it by signing up for our newsletter. Click the links in the description below or click on the cards that pop up on this video to learn more. We'll also add links at the end. But once you do identify the problem, you'll need to decide what to work on first. This is often just a simple matter of prioritization. When selecting the symptom to work on, you'll likely use frequency and cost, as well as the expected ease of the solution to decide where to put your effort. Fortunately, there are a wide range of tools available to you once you decide which symptom to start with. The most basic tool is the five whys, and we'll talk about it in greater detail in just a few minutes. There are also several intermediate tools. Some of the most common and most useful include the cause and effect diagram, as well as the Pareto chart and run chart shown in the pictures. The most advanced means of doing root cause analysis, though, rely on statistics. The goal of root cause analysis is to isolate the source of the problem so you can permanently eliminate it. This is easiest to do when a process is standardized and well documented. You'll be able to visually see the step where the problem originates. Of course, in many companies, this situation is the exception rather than the norm. In some organizations, processes will be much less structured, and unfortunately, this means that the root cause will be much harder to identify. The other challenge you will face is that when a fix is put in place, it may not be followed every time, so there is likely to be less permanence to any corrective action. To truly solve a problem for good, you will have to standardize your processes. The last step of root cause analysis is to prove your theory. This is like the check step of PDCA. If you've identified the source of the problem correctly, you should be able to predict the future. This basically means that you should be able to identify an action in the step of a process, often an error, and say exactly what will happen and when. Granted, it may not be absolutely precise, but you should be in the ballpark. It is very easy to get correlation and causation confused, so I'll give a word of warning here in the form of a story. Two avid fishermen were planning on going to the lake the next day and decided to go collect some bait. The one fisherman ran into the house and grabbed his umbrella, despite the day being sunny without a cloud in the sky. His fishing buddy asked what was going on and the first fisherman replied that whenever he walked with his umbrella, he saw lots of worms on the sidewalk. Of course, it was obviously heavy rain that was causing both the umbrella use and the worms to come out. The umbrella and the worms were correlated, but the umbrella has no power over the worms. Be careful not to select a correlated factor as a root cause, as changing it will not eliminate your symptoms. This video comes from Velaction's Lean Training System, which takes a module-based approach to learning about continuous improvement. Modules include a PowerPoint presentation, and student guides for every video, plus there are many exercises and quizzes as well. There's also a whole host of supporting content in the form of terms in our Continuous Improvement Companion and downloadable articles. Our modules are currently available in our store and as downloads at Velaction Videos. Click the links in the description below or click on the cards that pop up on this video to learn more. We'll also add links at the end.
Let's move from the general concept of root cause analysis to the specific use of one of the tools. Let's talk about how to effectively use the five whys. In this demonstration, let's assume that you show up for work one morning and come across a pool of fluid leaking onto the floor. Before we get too deep into using the five whys, I want to caution you about the tool. On the plus side, it is a very simple tool. The drawback though is that it is a very simple tool and it's limited in the types of problems it is most effective in solving. It works well for basic, low-risk problems, especially ones that are within one's comfort zone. So let's go back to that leaking machine. To put the five whys to use, simply go to the machine and ask why the coolant is leaking. In this case, you may quickly discover that it was due to a bad seal. This is where the concept of root cause is really apparent. If you just called maintenance and changed the seal, you'd likely experience the problem again at some point. Only the next time, the problem could be much more serious. So you keep asking why and discover that there are metal shavings in a coolant that damaged the seal. Ask why a few more times and you'll discover that there is a damaged screen that has been getting hit by falling parts. I mentioned earlier the challenge of determining whether something was really the root cause. This is an example of that. You could keep going and determine why parts are falling. Further investigation, though, takes time and effort. It takes a bit of experience to decide when to stop. In this case, you could keep going, but if you fixed the screen, perhaps by putting a sturdy guard over it, you could make a permanent solution. If you are observant, you'll notice that we only asked why four times. The five is a guideline, not a rule you'll occasionally find more whys and sometimes find fewer. Regardless, the point is to keep asking why until you get to the root cause, the thing you could change and remove the problem forever. The five whys has lots of advocates, not the least of whom was Taiichi Ono, the father of modern lean. There are many reasons that people like the tool. First, it is a good introduction to problem solving. It gives people a structured approach to go about finding solutions and once people get used to that concept, it can be applied in much more sophisticated ways. The five whys also prevents band-aid solutions. It keeps people from simply slapping a patch on a problem that will just buy a little bit of time. It is far better for both the company and the employee to knock problems out once and for all. By far though, the biggest reason that the five whys is popular is its ease. It is easy to teach the concept and easy to use. Because of its simplicity, it is a tool you're most likely to hear employees use in problem solving on their own. And that independent thought is a key to creating a continuous improvement culture. Nothing has all benefits though, and the five whys is no exception. In fact, there are some people who advocate not using the five whys at all. Thanks for watching this extended free version of our Lean Training System module video. If you want to watch the whole video, check it out at Velaction Videos. If you want to make sure you don't miss the next LTS video that we post, please be sure to subscribe down below. We also always appreciate likes as it helps us get viewed more and makes us keep adding additional content. Thanks for watching and best wishes on your continuous improvement journey.